In my last episode, I walked you through the process I go through when choosing a bikepacking route. Today, I'm gonna to show you how I plan that route and get it in my mapping software and make notes so that I'm prepared when I'm on the route. Once you pick a route, it gets real exciting because now I can really dig into the information. So what I'll do next is I will read through the whole overview there. And I think the most important part are these comment sections. I've got 47 comments through Discuss here on bikepacking.com. And I'm going to read every single one because people put really interesting info like, oh, this gate is now locked or there was no water at such and such place, but there is over here. And that'll all go into the beta of my route planning. Okay, now that I've read through all those comments, I've learned a few things. A lot of people do it counterclockwise and they like it, and other people do it clockwise and they like it clockwise. I'm not sure which way to do, um, but I'm gonna play with that and see if I can figure it out. I've also found that there's a section that crosses private property. Around mile 47.7, there's a locked gate with a no trespassing sign. I don't want to go on anyone's private property, so that means I'm going to have to modify this route. I can't just dump it in my GPS and follow the route. I'm going to have to do some research. And you should always expect to do a little bit of work when you're building your route. So first off, I'm going to download the route and get it into Ride with GPS so I can start editing it. So I'm going to download the GPX file here. Now I'm going to go to Ride with GPS. Ride with GPS is a partner of Hardtail Party. They love what we do here and they want you to see their software and I want you to see their software. I've been using it long before I was a partner with them, but they gave me premier account access so I can show you some of the extra features that are in here. A lot of this can be done with the free version and that's what I've used for years, but there are some special features I'm gonna do that are only available in the premier version. So we're gonna go to Route Planner and we're gonna plan a route. And to do this, we're going to import existing right here. This isn't a tutorial. This is just showing you how I do it real quick. We're gonna upload a file. Here's our tombstone hustle route. Open that, add to planner. Cool, and now we've got the route in here and we can change which map we've got by default. I like the ride with GPS map. It has some really cool features, like if I need to move the map or change a section, it'll automatically suggest common sections that other cyclists ride so that I know it's rideable by cyclists. That's a really cool feature. There are so many cool features in here. All right, but here we go. We can uh, scroll through this. I'm going to save this, set name, Tombstone Hustle with Cody and James, okay? So I'm now gonna build a cue sheet. And a cue sheet are these notes that pop up on my map as I'm going through certain points so that I can check things like, see if this creek's dry or turn right here, or this is where private property begins, or here's a potential camp spot. Um, this, I don't wanna go too deep, but points of interests are different and they behave differently in the software. A point of interest, only comes in with the GPX file. It doesn't come in with the fit file. It's kind of an overlay on top of your fit file. Uh, I'm just gonna put everything into one fit file. So I'm going to be using custom cues instead of points of interest. So when we go in and we read the notes about this, the discussion around 47.7, there's a locked gate, no trespassing sign. So I need to reroute this map. So around 47, so I'm gonna highlight on the elevation profile right here from 47 to 51.6, and it's gonna zoom me in, so I'm just looking at that. So I need to reroute. I think this right turn goes on to private property. Let's see if we can see a house or anything up there. Oh, there's someone's house. Okay, I'd be bugged if I was him too. Okay, I accidentally clicked away, so I need to undo that. All right. So now what I'm gonna do is add a control point before the private property turn off and after. And now that the control points have been added, when I make a modification, it'll keep everything on the other sides of the control points the same. So I'm just gonna drag this to the right and Ride With GPS is gonna use its artificial intelligence to look where other people have ridden in the area and add the most commonly ridden 
route as a recommendation. So I completely bypassed that private property and our route is connected and it figured that all out automatically, which was really awesome. Darn, it looks like we're missing some cool scenery in there, but we want to keep that guy happy and I don't blame him. I'd want to have people out of my private property as well. Okay, so that was super easy. Our route has been modified. It's 72 miles still. All right, nothing hugely significant. Let's go find some more info. Around mile 16.9, there's a small turnoff going left to a seasonal creek. So let's find 16.9. Somewhere in here. I wonder if that's this little leg up here. I think he means up here and that looks like an out and back. So I'm gonna add a custom queue right here and it's gonna say a note right here. Um, potential water source quarter mile away. Now, this is another really amazing thing about Ride With GPS. If you're running it on your phone, your phone's speech to text software will read this to you when it gets to that point. So even if you're not looking at your GPS or it's in like sleep mode where the screen's off, when you get here, it'll be robotic voice because that's how our phone's speech to text work. But it will read the notes from a custom queue to you when you get to it. That is huge. And then in the description, this it won't read out loud, but you can pull this up on your device. Um, probably dry, but it's an option if we're running low. I could add a photo. If someone took a photo of the spot and what the creek looks like, I could add a photo. So I'm going to save that. So this has been added to my queue sheet and it will appear on my GPS device as I get closer. All right, cool, that's another good piece of information. So then I'm just gonna go through all of this information and pick out all the little things people said like, oh, there's a great campsite at mile such and such, or I rode it clockwise and the hike a bike starts here. And so I'm gonna start populating my map and getting this thing as detailed as possible because when I'm out there, if there's no cell service or if there's an emergency or if I just need information right away, it's so nice if it's already built into my route. And it also gets me familiar with the route before I'm out there so that I've seen this enough times that when we're riding it, I'm like, oh yeah, that's the little spur that I remember marking on my map that I may need to go to if there's no water. All right, so now I'm gonna go in and make a whole bunch of notes from everything I've seen and pop them into my map and I'll show you what that looks like. All right, it's taken me a couple hours, but I've gone through every comment with a fine tooth comb and added all sorts of information. And because this works with a fit file, I can, I'm going to get turn by turn navigation cues on my device, which is going to be really cool. So my route's done. I'm just going to show you a couple things that I did. I changed it to counterclockwise by using this reverse route tool, but that squashed all my cues. So I had to go back in and put my cues back in. So we're going to start in the town of Tombstone, right out here, follow our elevation profile down there all just kind of gentle fire roads. We're gonna bypass the private property, which was right in here. We're gonna catch up here, catch the highway, and there's some food in here. There's a dollar store where we can get bottled water and snacks. Let's see some of those cues that I put in. So right here, this is TJ's Bar and Grill, so it'll read that out on my app. And then I put the hours and the phone number and in case I cared. And then here we've got Dollar General so we could uh, get some water bottles there if we had to. And then we make a left turn off of there. It's just fun to be able to walk through it now. Now that I know it, I feel like I know the route and I can walk through it and talk someone through what's going on. Up here is the horse trail in the notes. They're, they said, the horse trail section is terrible. This was hard to find. I had to go to Trail Forks and find trail 278 to see what it was referencing and then come back on my map and find that this is the part that they recommend skipping. So I put a note in here, horse bypass and toilet. So if I hang a right there, I can make it up to the toilet and bypass the horse trail. And then I popped in some campgrounds in here. There's a camp, potential water sources, um, potential turnoffs for other water sources, another camp spot, 
and then back to our camp back at the beginning. So I cleaned it up a little. I trimmed out any out and backs that Logan had on his original one and it's down to 69.7 miles and my route is ready. So I'm going to click save, overwrite, yes, counterclockwise. And I'm not going to give you the link to this because I think there's a ton of value in each traveler doing this themselves and getting to know the route in the process. We've all heard the story of the person who's taking their GPS on some crazy road and got their car completely stuck because they were just trusting the navigation of their car and blindly following it. I, I, I don't want people to do that on this route and get in trouble. It's not as particularly difficult route, but in the researching of it and putting notes in and rerouting, you really learn A, the ride with GPS tool, and B, you really learn the route. So, you know, if my batteries died, my brain still knows where all these things are, and that's super valuable. Okay, now that it's saved, I can share the route or send it to my device, and I wanna send it to my device. So first I'm gonna send it to my Ride With GPS app on my phone. Yes, I already have it. Okay, so now I'm gonna open Ride With GPS on my phone. It just said route received, tombstone hustle counterclockwise. So now I'm gonna export this on the fit file, which will put it on my stages dash. So the fit file is gonna have all the cues in here from my cue sheet, and it's gonna give me turn by turn navigation. Anywhere I put a cue point that said like turn left or turn right or stay straight, that can be really helpful and save a lot of time when you're navigating terrain you've never been on. So I'm gonna export this fit file. And I want it to notify me 15 meters before the turn. That gives me plenty of time to not be surprised. And download fit file. Here it is, downloaded to my device. So that'll work with Garmin devices and the stages dash. Now I can get it on here and follow along while I'm riding the route. I can always refer to this. And as a backup, I've got it on my phone with the Ride With GPS app as well. Now I'm gonna show you about one more really cool tool that I use to plan the weather on the trip. And that helps me know what gear to pack, kind of where the headwinds are gonna be, et cetera. And that is this app right here, Epic Ride Weather. Now it's linked to Ride With GPS. So I just click on that and I can see my other routes on there. So let's pull that up. So here's my route and I'm just gonna click weather for this route. And we get all these amazing graphs that are gonna show me weather. I can see precipitation. I can see wind speeds and direction um, on my route. How cool is that? And uh, you get a month for free with this and they've partnered with Hardtail Parties. And with this tool, you insert the date that you're gonna be going on your trip and it will calculate the weather, the precipitation, and even the wind direction on your route. So I can see where there's a tailwind versus a headwind. What an incredible tool. It was so easy to do. I just synced it with my Ride With GPS account and I'm way better prepared to plan it. Now you could do this on your own. You could go to weather apps and wind apps and you know zoom in and find the, the same spot. But man, that took 10 seconds and I'm super excited about this tool. It helps me know what gear to bring, which tent to bring, uh, if I think it's going to be windy, where I'm going to probably set up camp, if there's going to be precipitation, yes or no, what the temperatures are going to be. It's super helpful and saves me a ton of time from having to go nine different places to get all that info. So that was a lot of work to build that. And that's a lot of what goes into bikepacking that a lot of people don't see. They just see the beautiful views and the campground and the video we make at the end and think, I want to do that. If you can learn to love the research process, it'll make your actual trip even better. So now I'm even more excited than I was yesterday because I know the ins and outs of the route and what's gonna work and where my bypasses are. A lot of the unknown is taken away and all of that's made possible by the wonderful people from bikepacking.com, the people from ridewithgps.com, all the people who, did, who added their comments below the route, who tried it and added beta to it that really helped me. So that's how beta works. It's a community effort. We're all in this together. And whenever we share info, it helps the next person. So when I'm done with this route, I will definitely talk about what I found, my time of year, where there was water, where there wasn't, so that I can help the next person plan their trip. So there you have it. It's a long process and there were many hours that I didn't show in this video, 
but it's fun and it's exciting and it gets you hyped and prepared for the route. And now if something should happen, I know the route far better than before. I'm quite familiar with it. Even if I lost my GPS, I feel like I'm in a good place to make wise decisions on the trail. And with bikepacking, especially in remote areas, being prepared is key. Thanks for watching. Make sure you're subscribed so you can see the final result of this trip and how it went and what I learned and what I would have done differently. There's a party in the mountains and you're invited.